How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. It's Sunday. It's AEW Revolution Day. We have so much to talk about today. I know you guys are psyched for the show. It's going to start in very soon. Very excited for this. A lot of cool matches happening. You know, but the lead up to this was a little wonky. The lead up to this show has been a little all over the place. Um, Listen, man, you know, you got a great card here. You got great wrestling. It's going to be a fine show. However, the, the aftermath, the fallout is the big story here. A lot of changes for AEW, obviously. Ring of Honor TV has started. So a lot of that talent is going off of Dynamite and Rampage. You have MJF Danielson in a title match. Another chance for Danielson. Another story to tell for them. And you're going into WrestleMania season. So you got to heat things up here. There's a ton to break down. Also, everything else that happened. Dynamite and SmackDown. Very cool moment between Cody and Roman in that ring. Last night on SmackDown. Two nights ago on SmackDown. Curious to see how that falls out. But AW Revolution in a couple hours. Actually, by the time we're done with this, it should be on. We're going to break that down and a, and a whole lot more. Also, Rich Stamboli, my co-host from Mattman, is going to be joining me to break this whole thing down. Because, you know, sometimes you look at the card and you're like, ah, oh, it's great on paper, but I think this is going to be a good pay-per-view. I think this is going to be a really good show. We got a lot going on. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, Sunday edition, AEW Revolution edition. I'm joined by my lifelong tag partner in professional wrestling coverage, Rich Dambolian. What's going on, Rich? What's going on, man? I feel like I just saw you. I feel like I just saw you, too. Is this your second time on the show? It may be my third. Maybe your third. I think I did the first couple or the first one or the second one. I think you were on the first one, for sure. And then a couple here and there. Who knows, man? Who knows? Time is a flat circle. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> uh, we did Matt Men yesterday. Uh, a lot of fun, of course. We've been doing that show for like, how, how long now? A Four little over 10 years. A little I, over 10 years, yeah. I believe this week, I believe this week's upcoming episode is our 450th. Wow. Which is pretty fantastic, I gotta say. That is, that is fantastic. Yeah, it's a good milestone. Another year for 500. We'll do something big. I hope so. We'll do something big. Let's start off. You know, AEW Revolution this weekend. Very, very cool uh, card. I'm excited for the card. We're going to break that down. But what do you think of the lead up to this? Do you think they've done a great job with the lead up? Or do you think that there's some room for improvement here? Great job. Great job is, I think, giving them too much credit, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll be very honest about this. The lead up, to, and this is just, you know, the analysis and the analytical podcasting mind speaking. The, ana- the, the lead up to this show, not great. And this is one of their major pay per views. I think the Danielson MJF stuff has been really good. Agreed. Everything else? Yeah. Kind Maybe not so much. Even though on paper this looks like a fun car, there are a few glaring um, omissions here. Like we mentioned on uh, Mad Men the other day, namely Jade Cargill not defending that title, not on that card. Yeah, Let, we'll run down this card in a few minutes. But let's talk about Dynamite. Their go home show did eight hundred and thirty three thousand viewers on Wednesday which is not great considering they had a million plus the week prior. Mm -hmm. Was it Tony's big announcement that drew him or was it the fact that the NBA wasn't on? Maybe a little both. I think a little both. Absolutely. Yeah. Tony's announcement was obviously the, um, these, the all access show. There will be another announcement coming. Tony also said that there will be another announcement. Tony's big announcement was at AEW All Access, the reality show. We spoke about that. The show will air on TBS starting in March, right after Dynamite, 10 p.m. He said, and listen to this, okay? They released a trailer yesterday, I believe. Tony also teased a more, more important announcement going into this week, into this weekend. Curious what this is. 
Uh, I know that they are working on something else to be announced. Uh, I, I think it's uh, the next couple months is going to be interesting. I'll lay it like that. There are a lot of things in the works for AEW and from the AEW camp. And I think Tony does a good job of playing things close to the vest. Uh, with Revolution tonight, who knows? Maybe he could announce one or two of those things. I know people are really excited about the possible exact release date for the game. The game is the big thing, right? The, yeah. It's second quarter. Yeah. Uh, Ring of Honor kicked off already. Yep. Looks great. I have to tell you, I very much like the look of Ring of Honor now. Yes. Visually, it's very impressive. Uh, it makes you wonder, like, if Ring of Honor had this production, you know, level, and they did stuff internally, like in Orlando, how much of a difference would it make is to their TV, you know, to have this consistent look? Because right now they're mm -hmm. filming in Orlando. It looked good. Doesn't look bad at all. It looks bigger. It looks big. It looks way bigger. Mm -hmm. But will it get stale? Like how NXT, you know, with NXT people complain that it's a little stale because it's the same building every time. I think this is going to get chalked up to those peaks and valleys of professional wrestling where if you take a look at NXT, I'm glad you mentioned NXT, NXT 2.0 really doesn't do it for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and it makes you almost hunger for the alternatives alternative. And and would I that think, be Ring of Honor? I think this Ring of Honor, which is the <laughs> the irony of it, was Ring of Honor was the alternative, and now it's the alternative's alternative. Very right? interesting. Yeah, interesting way to look at it. So that that's going on. There's a lot of changes happening at Dynamite. Uh, let's go into Dynamite before we go into the card and what you expect from this show, because uh, I think depending on who you're asking, uh, the expectation level is going to be a little bit different here. I'm pulling up the card here. Where is Dynamite at? Our producer, our mega producer, it's missing. Here we go. I don't see it. I don't see Dynamite. Do you see Dynamite? No. Nope. Yes. I don't oh, uh, okay. Dynamite started out with uh, Orange Cassidy defeating Big Bill, formerly uh, Big Cass. They need to change that name. Not a fan of the Big Bill moniker. I'll tell you that. Uh, to retain the AEW All Atlantic title, fun match. It's just fine. I like that they're working in Stokely Hathaway into like certain angles, but I think this is going to get chalked up to like what AEW has been doing in the last year is a little give and take. Yeah. Who knows how long this firm stuff is going to last. I like Big Bill. I wish the name was changed. The and I, yeah. And I want him to be put in a, an almost like a different program, right? I would hope so. I would hope that they do something different. I, him and Orange, listen, I thought it was good. I thought, I thought he worked really good with Orange Cassidy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's good with the smaller guys. He does have that factor. And that, that's a WWE effect right there, yeah. right? He they, can work with small guys. Yeah. They, well, they kind of force you to. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Eddie Kingston, Ortiz, AR Fox, Sammy Guevara, Action Andretti, Takeshita, and Commander to win the Face of the Revolution ladder match. A lot of, lot of online hysteria over the fact that the refs were holding the ladder. Yeah. They generally hold the ladder a lot of times. <laughs> It's not something that's new, uh, but I guess because it was caught on camera, people were losing. Their house. Powerhouse Hobbs was so over in that building because it's his hometown. Yeah. But, you know, I got to tell you, San Francisco, the Cow Palace, I thought that building would be slammed. Yeah. It was under 4,000 people there. Yeah. I don't know why. Is it the market? Is it AEW maybe cooling off a little bit? Uh, I would imagine that that, that would have been a big show. I mean, here's the other part, right? Four, it was a 4 p.m. show. Yeah. Who's not working? Who's working? How are you taking off? You know, th there's a lot of that, especially... On, but Seattle didn't have that problem. Other, you know, West Coast venues did not have that problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious how this is going to play out. Uh, you know, listen, they, did, they, did they give you anything you wanted to tune into? That's part of it, that's part of it too. You know, that to take off from work and to go 3,000, 4,000 people... Could you, have, could you have added something to give another 2,000 people in that building? I don't know. You know. It was a fine match. Commander was the big story here. He took a big spot. He did the uh, the, the rope walk, and he did a swanton. Twice. Two Twice. rope walks. Yeah, he did two rope walks. Chris Jericho defeated Peter Avalon. It was more of a display. He gave a lot to Peter, and then he just killed him at the end. Mm-hmm. Hook defeated Matt Hardy to retain the FTW title. Rio defeated Tony Storm. Dan Housen and the All-Atlantic champion Orange Cassidy last eliminated the Butcher and the Blade to win the Casino Tag Team Royale. 
Uh, they're in the match now. I do think the trigger might be pulled on these guys winning the. You rounds. think so? I don't want. I it. think I don't so. Know. I love Danhausen, but I I I don't know if that's what they should do. As we as we mentioned on Matman the other day, yesterday, the tag match for Revolution tonight is very much skewing towards a comedy match. Because a lot, uh, Jeff Jarrett's a comedy character by hook or by crook. Like I don't, I don't think he wants to be a comedy character, but you know, he's he's definitely a comedy comedy yeah. character. The guns are the acclaimed, you know, yeah, their comedy act. Dan Housen for sure, comedy act. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm curious if that was by design. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll start the show and give people like something to kind of cheer for and pop for. I do think that that um, their version of that intercontinental title. That Cassidy's holding, yeah, the Mid Atlantic title, the, Mid-Atl- the, Mi- the All Atlantic title, All Atlantic title. Yeah. Sorry, I think that needs to be off of Cassidy, and I'd be more than happy with him and Dan Housen holding those tag belts. Sure, okay, cool, right? But very interesting. We'll talk about this. But there are a lot of key people missing from this tag match. The Bucks are missing. Mm-hmm. FTR is missing. You know, these are these are major major teams for them, serious Lucha- teams, and they're not here. Lucha Bros. Lucha Bros. Yeah. Another one. Yeah, that's another great one. They're not in this. Very different now, you know. We also had Daniel uh, Brian Danielson and MJF have a confrontation, which we'll talk about uh, when we go into the entirety of the card. But essentially, he said he's going to kick his head in, and uh, this is a sixty-minute match, so they've been really good at building this. Very interested to see this. I do believe that the promos have been great at this. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the card and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition, AEW Revolution edition. I'm joined by Rich Stambolian here in studio. Rarely have someone in studio for the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, like we live so close that it's a, a little break in a kayfabe here. Uh, I should be in studio more often. Not necessarily for this show. It's just, just been really busy. Just in general. It's just, yeah, life yeah. has been very busy the last uh, couple months here. Hey, it happens. AW Revolution Zero Hour starting in a few minutes here. Are you excited for the show? I am. I am. Uh, for a number of reasons. One, because I know it's going to be a fun show to watch, and it's you know nice and easy. I'm not doing a watch-along. Yeah. I'm not doing it live. I don't have to do a post-show which I did after, what was the show that I did with uh, Garrett? We did a post-show. It was the last WWE PLE. Was it Royal Rumble? I believe it was Rumble. And it was brutal for me to do that show. I took... Brutal. I I, I rarely do this, but I took a little bit of schadenfreude in the fact that you were so miserable (laughs) that you had to do the show. I was so giddy. That, oh, he's going to hate this so much. As soon as you told me that you agreed to it. I was so tired. Mm -hmm. I was so tired. Because it was by the time we were done, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been in the same room with you when your eyes start to glaze over. Oh, man. It's the worst. I'm done. You dip, yeah. I I die inside. Let's start off with this. Zero Hour starts off with Mark Briscoe and the Lucha Bros. Versus AR5. AR. I'm sorry. Aria Davari and the Varsity Athletes, Josh Woods and, and Tony Nese. It's a nice, fun match to put on the pre-show. Mm-hmm. Um, Briscoe and the Lucha Bros take it? I think so. I, that's going to pop the crowd big time. Yeah. You know? Whenever you see the Lucha Bros and, you know, even Mark Briscoe, like, there's such colorful personalities, you know, as uh, as Zack Ryder and um, his partner would say, they're very toyetic. Brian Myers. Brian Myers. Yeah. Very. AW Revolution starts at 8 p.m. Here are the matches, and let's break this down. And I want to know your interest level in this, right? We got Christian Cage versus Jungle Boy. Is this the final one between them? I think this has to be it, and I think this is Christian putting over Jungle Boy, making him a made man. We talked about made men on Mat Men the other day. I think this is the match to make Jungle Boy. I, I would hope so. I would hope that this this really elevates him because he's been there for a while. He's an original, yep. and they've had some stop and goes with him. He was great. He was a tag team act for a while. Well, he had that whole crew for a while, right? And then and then Marco's gone. He was a tag yeah. act. Really good, strong tag team. Split him up. 
Christian got involved, and now this feud has continued. I I wanted to end, but okay. So where where does Jungle Boy go, Jungle Boy go from here, and where does Christian go from here? Those are the two big questions. Was Jungle Boy considered one of the AEW pillars? Um, he's one of the originals, right? Mm. He would be one of the originals. I think at times that they they've kind of elevated him, and he's been put in a position that he you consider that. But you know, he's taking a back seat here for a little bit. I do think we're going to see Luchasaurus get involved in this somehow. I'm actually looking forward to this match, to be honest with you. Uh, Christian really sold me on this with his promo on Wednesday night. Yeah, he did a very good job here. Vince hates his face. Uh, Isn't uh, that the story? I believe the term was uh, rat-faced. He calls him rat-faced. Yeah. You got uh, a Texas death match. John Moxley, Hangman, Page. This is their fourth match? Something like that. Is this yeah. the fourth one? MG, our producer, he would know this. Um, it's a Texas death match. I want this to end, too. We've seen it plenty of times. You think this is going to end much like the Blackpool Combat Club did with, between him and Danielson, where like they end up becoming tag partners? I don't know. Or this is a total turn for John Moxley to become a full-fledged heel, because that whole entire group, they're heels. Yeah. You know, honestly, I want to see Hangman be a heel. They did tease that, didn't they tease that? And they didn't pull the trigger on it, which was a good move by them. I would like to see him become a vile heel and really incorporate the new somehow. You know, do some like real classic wrestling stuff, like real southern. Just start weaponing everybody. Yeah, with it. like gnarly stuff. You know, like he's kidnapping people left and right. He's being like a like like you, a lunatic. Yeah. You've never seen him as like a really badass heel, right? He was he was built as a baby voice baby face from the get in this company. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I mean, they remember when he was drinking and he was like, he was turning a little bit on yeah. everybody. And then they decided, no, 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 we're not going to make this a full-fledged turn. They scaled back on that. Yeah, they did, for sure. Um, who takes this? You think Moxley or Hangman? I think Hangman needs this. Mox doesn't need another win. Okay, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a bloody match, though. Yeah. Chris Jericho, Ricky Starks, JAS is banned from ringside. This is a moment for Ricky. Yes. Ricky should win this. Uh, you know, obviously it's a display. You got Chris Jericho on the card. That's a big story here. But they've had matches, you know, and I, mm -hmm. and I haven't loved it. And I don't know where the disconnect for me is here. Is it the size? Is it just the buildup? I don't know. I think this, this feud has been very good. I think it just got lost in the shuffle a little bit. I do think that there's going to be a meta aspect to the revolution aspect of the pay-per-view where, like we were saying, I think a lot of guys are going to be put over. They're going to be made guys. I think Ricky Starks is going over. Hangman's going over. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, I think Jungle Boy's going over. And, you know, we'll get into, like, the rest of it, too. But all signs point to, like, the quote-unquote underdogs coming yeah. out on top, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Ricky should win this. I, this is probably the one that I don't have that much interest in, but I think it's a lot of it has to do with the build up to this. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, I think it was weird how they did it, how Jericho kind of got like scammed into the match. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Classic wrestling. AW world tag team championship, the guns, the acclaimed Jeff Jarrett and Jay lethal. Do they have a name here? They are double J J and J, right? I think so. Jeff Jarrett, Jay Lethal, Double J. So good. Just call him Double J. And uh, Orange Cassidy and Dan Housen. So we were talking about, this is, every character here is a comedic character in this match. There is a comedic edge to every team in this match. It's a Molly crew of tag teams. Who should take it? I know who I want. I Pull the trigger on Jeff Jarrett and there Jay Lethal. There you go. Lethal. Thank right you very much. If, if later tonight you see these guys hoist up, they teased it too on Dynamite a few weeks ago, right? When they held the titles up? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing it. Why not? Uh, but I do think, like like we said before, get that um, Atlantic. I can't even remember the All name. Get the All Atlantic title off of Cassidy. Put the tag belt on him with him and Dan House, and they're over. I think you can have these guys as a. I'd rather have these guys as a tag team than him holding that like se third title. Secondary title, third title. I don't know. It, it, I guess it would be the the third title, right? The third men's title. Yeah, because you have. So many belts in that company. Now, well, before well, now the, the Ring split. of Honor split. Right. So it's positive. It's not as much. So now you have two secondary titles. 
very much like WWE. You have yeah. the U.S. title and you have the T uh, and the IC title. They have the uh, All Atlantic title and the TV title. So the TNT title. TNT title. Yeah. TNT. Who do you think takes it? I. Uh, I'm going to go with the acclaimed. But I, too soon for them to get it back. I really want Jared and Lethal to win it. Unless there's some sort of swerve it. here. Somebody gets taken out. Somebody else comes in. Mm -hmm. There's no FTR on the show. No. Interesting. I don't know. I, I think I, Jeff and Jay should win it, in my opinion, because I just want to see the internet lose their minds that Jeff Jarrett has a title in AEW. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I just want to see it happen. Uh, TNT Championship Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. Samoa Joe holds the Ring of Honor TV title along with the TNT. The Ring of Honor TV title along with the TNT Championship. Who should take this? Wardlow? If they're going to pull the trigger on a full blown Ring of Honor return, it has to be Wardlow, right? Yes. So then you get Joe off of regular television, put him with Ring of Honor, or not. But see, I have a problem with that. You got a guy like Samoa Joe. Yeah. Recognizable, great wrestler. People are into him. Yep. Do you keep him in AEW or you send him to Ring of Honor? Where do you benefit more? I think you benefit more with him in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor benefits for sure. Yeah, as the veteran, you know. But I'm, again, this is just like... I do not know what to expect from whatever they're doing with Ring of Honor. It's on Honor Club for now. Uh, I don't expect that to be the long term mm -hmm. at all. I think this is a short term thing. I They need to get on TV. Yeah. And whether or not you do a one hour. I mean, you could film a month's worth and just have them on weekly on any time on a, on a Warner property. I think right now it's the contract deal that's kind of holding this off. But... Mm -hmm. Why can't you put this on on a Saturday? Why can't you put this on on any other day? I think a Saturday would be the best, to be I honest. I agree. Yeah. Saturday afternoon? Saturday, 6.05, man. Do yeah. it. Do it. Uh, you got to get it on TV if you're trying to grow it. Yeah. But Wardlow should take this. Samoa Joe could go to, you know, continue doing what he's doing with Ring of Honor. Uh, this could be a great match. I think it will be. Um, and also, you know, you have Hobbs in the mix somehow too. You could put Hobbs. In I the think mix he's too. in that. He's firmly in that title picture, you know. And if Wardlow takes it, why not have him and Hobbs be a feud again? You could do that, for sure. I think the big story here for Wardlow is MJF. You build him up for MJF, and you do you do that program finally. I personally think people. This is my opinion. I do think people forgot about that. It was so big. It was so big and important. Mm -hmm. And the fact that people have forgotten about it says so much about bad booking. Well, I also think it was marred by the CM Punk thing. I think everything was. <laughs> little little hand in hand there, you know. Yeah. I, I think a lot of a lot of stuff happened there because of the CM Punk thing. But this looks like you know, this could be a great match. I think this this is gonna be a fantastic match. Very excited to see this. And I hope that Wardlow kind of gets over and they start building him again here. When we come back. We're going to talk about the rest of the matches. And there's one match here I really want to get your opinion on, on how they should do this. And that is the, the, the Iron Man match. I want to know from you how they should play this out. Because this is probably going to be the most important match for both of these guys. As far as MJF goes. We're going to go to a break here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition AEW Revolution preview. I'm joined by Rich Stambolian from the Matt Men podcast. Hello. What else do you do? Anything else? Uh, as far as wrestling goes, no, but I do host a comic book podcast, BTC 2.0, and a movie podcast. Very film, cool. Film Class Zeros. Very, very cool. Where can people find it? Uh, oh, film Class Zeros is on iTunes and uh, I believe on the GFQ network. <laughs> Shameless plug. Am I allowed to do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, and you can find me at BTC Rich on Twitter. Very cool. Let's talk three more matches to run down here. We have the AW Women's World Championship. Mm -hmm. Jamie Hader, Ruby Soho, and Soraya. 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 One Soraya. day we'll know for sure. One day we will know for sure. Uh, you know, this is a lot of criticism on Paige and how she's fitting in with this roster. Okay. 
uh, her style of wrestling is very different. Mm -hmm. You know, she hasn't wrestled in a number of years, and she is banged up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she's been okay. This is going to be a good showing in this match. But who should take it? Is this should Jamie keep the title? I think that Jamie needs to hold on to that title. I personally love her as a champion. I also know that she's the internet's darling as that champion. She very much is, and and to a lot of people, she came out of nowhere. Yes, you know, uh, and we we saw the build for her. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I mean, just a total change in character, persona, moveset. You know, she's evolved tremendously the last mm -hmm. year. I think most improved. She's one of those for AEW. Yeah, they have been slowly building the women's division into being something bigger. Uh, I think this is a good showing here, and you got three very good. You know, smart workers in this match. Jamie takes it. What happens with Ruby and and Paige? Now, here's the thing. I think Ruby joins that crew. Joins that crew as their version of the Outsiders because they've been playing that up, right? Right. And what a great moment if Mercedes Monet Monet shows up. What a great moment to kind of be like, look, we got another one. That would be the ultimate forbidden door match if they go that route again this year. Jamie Hayter, AEW Women's Champion versus IWGP Women's Champion, Mercedes Money. You know what? That is the big match for June, huh? Why not? You could do it. That can main event. Why the can't you do it? That's Absolutely. a forbid. That's a hundred percent a forbidden door match. I didn't yeah. even think of that. Would be a great match. Yeah. Well, I would put. I. You could see that as a main event. Because that would be the moment to introduce her, right? Absolutely. It's an easy thing. It could be a one-off, no problem. Mm -hmm. But here she is in Forbidden Door. And then maybe get a four-on-four. Four. Do a four-on-four four. afterwards, afterwards or before, whatever you're doing. Afterwards. I think you get the four-on-four four in New Japan, though. Okay. You know? Yeah, you could do it. I think that's a very cool thing. AW Trios Championship. The Elite versus the House of Black. We've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. I, My own personal opinion... Kenny, need, Kenny and the Bucks need to get away from the trios matches. I agree with you. They're kind of locked in here with their titles. They're not doing much beyond it. Uh, you know, you got Kenny Omega. This is one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time. He's not really wrestling. And you got one of the greatest tag teams of all time, arguably. And they're not really challenging for any titles. I think it's time to take the titles off of them. Do something unique here. Do something different. And have Kenny back in the main mix and have the Bucks back in the tag position. I think on paper, having them as a trio works for everybody because the three guys are EVPs, right? Yep. Unless they relinquish their position no. after the... No, they're, they're EVPs. Yeah, they're EVPs. It takes their wrestling load off of them. They stay healthier, right? This is good for them physically and probably better for them to do paperwork and office work and all that stuff that comes with being an EVP. But the problem with that is, again, Kenny is arguably the best professional wrestler on the planet and right now most desired and most desired would it a feud let's say mjf retains uh, the title okay. right now would a feud with kenny omega work if he becomes a singles wrestler and i i, I feel like i speak for both of us when i say this if danielson wins tonight wouldn't a Kenny Danison feud make more sense? Revisit that. Yeah, great. I mean, those are great options. Now, who? the other part is who should take the title off of MJF when that moment comes? Is it Danielson tonight? Is it a Kenny Omega? Is it a Hangman? Is it Moxley? Is it Jericho? I mean, you have options here, but you mm -hmm. whatever you do, you have to make it make sense. Uh Kenny and MJF, we haven't seen that, really. We haven't seen it, but it's also, as a fan, and I don't want to be, like, too analytical, but as a fan, wouldn't you see that feud is, like, almost laughable? Because Danielson is doing part of what you imagine Kenny would do. I'm going to expose you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to expose yeah. you as, as not a real wrestler, right? Kenny versus anybody is pretty much that built in, right? Yeah. You know, like just the he's the, such a better wrestler than everybody else, right? Yeah. You know, so like I, I think you could do it, and you know, wrestling has a way of surprising you. I think you could do it in an interesting way. You know, like what is the common ground between 
Kenny and MJF that they could exploit as far as them coming head to head, you know? Like, yeah. what would that story be? I don't know. That's, a, that's actually a good question. I don't know what you could do with the story. But we're going to have to get yeah. there somehow. Uh, House of Black takes it or the Elite takes it? Not what you want, what you think will happen. I do think House of Black's going to take you it. You think so? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Very interesting. And now we have the 60-minute Iron Man match for the AW World Championship. MJF versus Brian Danielson. This is a, you know, this is a test. This is a test to see if people, if there's interest to watch a 60-minute Iron Man match. Mm -hmm. There's a, a test for MJF to see the pacing of this match and how he does. I think he's going to be fine. He's in the best yeah. shape of his life. He looks like a million bucks. He does. Danielson is a machine. But what happens here? Personally, I want Danielson to win. Now, is that the right thing for MJF? No. I'm just saying as a fan, if I'm watching this and I'm not being an analyst, I want Danielson to win this title. That's how you should feel. But will he? I would love it if Danielson won. As as the fan, as the wrestling fan, as a supporter of this guy's entire career, I want that moment, right? On a big paper. Right. Yeah. The promo he cut on Wednesday, like it, it harkened back to Yes Movement, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. He mentioned facing the authority and beating the authority. Mm -hmm. I thought he was going to mention beating Evolution in one night. You know. Yeah. He could have gotten away with it. Now, would you prefer this scenario for tonight? No falls happen until the last two minutes of the match. So uh, do they do that? I, I I mean, is that something that they do? Or do they just have fall after fall happen? Mm -hmm. That's also a possibility. Or does MJF take a couple, you know, ahead? Or does does Danielson take a bunch ahead and then MJF works his way back? There's so many different ways to work this. I'm very curious how they're laying it out. There's also the fact that we could get a little icky on a backstage segment where MJF is still paying people to come and help him. That's also it. Do you want to see the list? I have a list of Iron Man matches here. Sure. Okay. I'm looking at this. Let's see. The first one, according to Wikipedia. Now, I don't know how accurate this is. The first one is Ric Flair and Bret Hart. They did it at a live event in Boston. Mm -hmm. Bret and Owen is another one they did. Yeah. Sean and Brett, that was the big one, right? That's the one everybody knows. Arguably the most classic. But is it a good match? Was Sean and Brett a good match? Was Sean and Brett Iron Man match a good match? I I feel like we watched that together recently. I there, MG, the, the overall, our producer, MG Geek, the overall, I guess, opinion of this is that it wasn't a good match, right? Uh, I think so. I mean, I remember it as a good match. Uh, I do too. Interest. Yeah, same here. But really, the mm. thing that I remember is the outside spot mm -hmm. and the overtime. Right. That that's what everybody remembers. It went it went a, almost two minutes in overtime, and it was only one fall that they did. Another question for tonight: Does the modern fan have the attention span and wherewithal that's a great question to sit through yeah. a 60 minute they're telling it's not it's not like they're telling you it's not yeah. like okada and kenny did that 60 minute banger and right? you didn't know yeah it was I, what was that 60 minute time limit yeah right? they're telling you like no 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 buckle up you're gonna be watching this for an hour and i feel like when they let you know especially with with like going into it and knowing what you know about both guys who uh, are people going is, is interest going to wane on this? I would hope not. You know, like I, I yeah, think I'm too. in it, you know, um, me too. WCW I, had two 60 minute Iron Man matches. Rick rude, uh, Ricky steamboat, Rick rude. Uh, I'm sorry. They did a 30 minute and Dustin and Rick rude, 30 minute Iron Man match. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to this. Me too. Me too. I, I hope that it works out. Um, on how they do this. They've done a 30-minute Iron Man match mm -hmm. twice. They've done 30-minute matches. Uh, Kenny Omega's been... Well, Kenny did uh, defeat a Pac 3101, and then there was a time limit draw, right? They did a 30-minute draw, for, or was it a 20-minute draw with Danielson? I want to say it was 30. 30? 
now so they have options here. They, there's multiple things. How does it end? Give me your give me your final moment of this. My final moment of what I'm immediately picturing is again no falls during the entire match. Uh, Danielson gets screwed out of the pinfall. The uh, the only pinfall in the match. MJF shenanigans. MJF gets that pinfall with three seconds left, and Danielson can't. He just can't, can't recover from can't it. Can't recover from it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, but you know, it might go the other way. It there, might it go the other might way. Might be ten pinfalls. You know, to keep the crowd yeah, interested. Yeah, and you know, da- the the story of Danielson has been he just can't cut it for the big moments. And the shoulder. And the shoulder. So how much is that going to play? Or is this his redemption moment where he does beat MJF? You could have that title go back to MJF anytime. Yeah. Does it? Who, does MJF get hurt if he loses this? Does Danielson get hurt? I mean, how many times are we going to see Danielson in a title position where he no longer he can't do it? You, eventually, he's going to have to win the title to make it all mean something. I don't think it a loss hurts either guys in the situation. You know, Danielson is extremely beloved, and MJF is the guy you love to hate at this point. You know, like they're they're both hot in their own way. Now, another question would be: Is this is this DQ or no? No DQ. No, there's no DQ. There's no DQ. Yeah. Right. What if we get a swerve? MJF pays off Wheeler Yuta. And they turn on him. Yeah, yeah, that's a possibility too. Or, or all of, or all of them turn on on Danielson. Because remember, they're heels, right? They're heels, and they all turn on Danielson. Why not go the mercenary route? That I think yeah. that would add. This is just weird, like hearsay here. F- fantasy booking. Yeah. Fantasy booking, right? Let's say Blackpool Combat Club. They're all mercenaries, right? Yeah. High is bitter. High is bitter. MJF. MJF has the money. And he finally takes him out with his friends. Exactly. His friends took him out. Great story. Guys, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we're going to wrap this all up. Final few minutes of the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Getting ready to go watch AW Revolution. I'm excited for this. It's going to be a hot crowd. I think talking about it has made me more excited for the show tonight. Yeah, see? I know. And then now, now the pay per view after this is uh, double or nothing, mm-hmm. and then we have uh, Forbidden Door. Both are going to be good. I really do like the structure of not a pay per view every month. The little special shows here and there are great. I think they need to add another one. Mm-hmm. Like four pay per views a year is not enough because the build is so long. Yeah, you know, you got a three month build. Unless you're going to start doing title changes on TV, maybe another two. So six, there six major events. Six major the... events and Forbidden Door is a one off. Okay, I like that. I could take it. I like that. I could take that. I want to hear from you guys during the show, during this pay per view. Start tweeting me at Andrew Zarian. Let me know what you're thinking. I'll be live tweeting in a couple minutes here. Very much enjoy this. Uh, we're going to be live tweeting. We're going to be talking about this. I'll be doing it on the Matt Men channel also. Matt Men podcast. You can follow us there. You can follow me at Andrew Zarian. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of news that comes out after this show. Uh, and maybe we have a couple of couple surprises. So I'm very excited for that. Rich, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on Twitter at BTC Rich. That's my uh, social media platform of choice. That is it. That's it. That's your choice. I'm on Instagram at BTC Rich X. But if you want to go there, you'll see some cool action figure pictures. That's, That's about, about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, this was a lot of fun. Enjoy the show. Have a drink. Order some food. And have a great time. We'll see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live.